Okay, here we go. Take two. Okay, so we're outlining with permanent marker. Here, I'm also going to do just a small section of the T where it overlaps the R, and that's only because I don't want to be careful with my eraser. And then I went and put like value in here, and I'm going to be changing that in a minute. Okay. So just going through, outlining everything. And so your 3D should hopefully be open and not have any shading. If it's got shading in there, like mine does right now, then you need to erase it out. Okay, all right, there we go. So now I'm gonna get my, once you have this outline and permanent marker, get your big eraser and get rid of all those pencil marks. Just like that. Once you're finished with that, like, can you guys see all the dots on my paper from where permanent markers bled through throughout oh, the day? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, I happened to a couple people in one of the hours, they had their graffiti project underneath and someone has to start over because it bled so bad. Okay, once you're finished erasing, find your black colored pencil black color pencil don't use your regular pencil use your black color pencil if for some reason you do not have colored pencils there are is there are is a big old bin up here on the front table okay First thing that we're going to do is we're going to work at putting in drop shadows. So what that means is any time that you have some overlapping, which you should have this in your project. So we've got overlapping right here between two letters. We have overlapping here, just one part of a letter over another. And then I've got some overlapping over here in the A. I'm not going to be doing a whole bunch of work in the A. I'm only going to do this drop shadow and that's it in there. And then I'm going to really just focus on working in the R. Okay. So if I want to put a drop shadow down, it's very similar to like our last project where we did cast shadows. It's darker, like closer to the shape or form, and then it gets lighter. So let's just start from working out the T area here. We're also not going to be real specific on like light source. So we're kind of going to bend, kind of going to bend hmm, shadow like physics, kind of shadow laws. So we're just going to do more animation here. So closer around the T, I'm going to start using my black colored pencil and I'm not going to use it like pressure wise super hard. And then as it goes away from the letter T, I'm gonna let it gradually get lighter and lighter. Okay, I don't want it to take up like a ton of space with it. So I just want it to be really light and it's even gonna be lighter, or whoops, excuse me, darker here. So it's got a cast shadow down there too. Huh? Do you have any overlapping happening? Like, do you have some overlapping here? And then do you have some overlapping into the A? Nope. Okay. Well then. Oh, you guys, come on, man. Okay. All right, so just pay attention hardcore, okay? All right. Okay, so then next place, I've got this area here where this leg overlaps the other one. So I'm gonna go around that area and as it moves away, it's gonna get lighter. And then don't forget even down in the 3D parts, I'm kind of making that a little darker. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over into the A, but this is the only work that I'm gonna do in the letter A. So it's gonna be nice and dark, up against the R, and then I'm just gonna let it do a real quick fade. I don't want a lot of black 
showing up in my project. So I'm doing this just to get some dimension. So we're working on depth and dimension right now. All right? Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start giving some dimension in like the curves and area. Okay. So the way that I'm talking about where we are kind of skewing shadow physics laws is that basically any time that this looks like it's disappearing into space or something's blocking it, that's where the shadow's gonna happen. So this area is kind of disappearing behind this curve. So we're gonna have shading happen there and then it's gonna fade out around this curve. So this is where you guys should be able to pick back up. Like if you didn't have any overlapping here, you should be able to do here, unless you don't have this done at all. Okay, kind of like that. We may have just like a little bit showing here. Not very much though. And then this is like a way inner corner right here, this line. So we're gonna have a lot of shading happening here and then kind of lighten up going this way and then lighten up going down this way. But then again, we have this leg that's overlapping. And so I forgot some of the drop shadow right there. Okay, so something like that. Okay, so we've added some dimension. We've added some depth. Now, let me talk about color really quick. Like the most shallow, discussion about color that I can possibly give. This is a color wheel. There's one above my door. While it looks like it's just a circle of pretty colors, it's actually systematically placed out, shows color mixing relationships and co shows color schemes and color relationships in general, okay? So what we're looking at here is colors are placed specifically. Complementary colors are colors that are across each other on the color wheel, like this, and they give the most contrast. That is the kind of color scheme that I'm probably going to use personally on this worksheet. You don't have to do that. Another word that you'll learn more about for our next project, because it's gonna be all color pencil, is analogous, and that is for the colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. So you need to pick two colors that are analogous. You need to pick two colors that are right close to each other on the color wheel. Now you don't have to do these little inner ones if you don't want to. These are called tertiary colors. They're the in-betweens. So if you want to do like green and blue, that's fine. You don't have to get it so close where it's blue and green. Or if you even did like blue um, and blue violet, that's fine if you do want to do it that close. Okay, or yellow and green, whatever, orange, red, I don't care. So you need to pick two colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. So let me see what I've done today. I've done blues, I've done greens. I did, I'm gonna do yellow and orange this time. So you guys pick two colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. They're right next, right next door. Oh, guys, and you're, these are gonna be deceiving. Like the colored pencils, like the outside, the orange, it looks red. And the red one looks like a salmon, kind of like a salmon-y color. So just pay attention, like read the color pencils. Okay, so I have yellow and orange. Okay, if you also wanna think about like weight, like color weight, lighter colors will be like at the top and darker colors will be at the bottom, but you do not have to do that if you don't want, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my lighter color and I'm gonna start at the, and I'm just coloring in the front face of the R and I'm gonna color lightly 
about two thirds of the way down. So kind of like about right in here, okay? So I'm just gonna color in lightly, just get a base coat, and then I'm gonna come back and use more pressure here in a little bit. Okay, so just using it real lightly and I'm just concentrating on the front face of the R. Okay, so very lightly, I've colored that in about two thirds of the way down. Then I'm gonna go back up to the top of the R and I'm gonna use hard pressure. So about like a 10, okay? So basically you're just kind of using the same thing that you learned with regular pencil. Now we're just doing it in color. So guys, see the difference? It just makes it a lot more bold, okay? So what I'm teaching you today are the different kind of coloring techniques that you're gonna use on your graffiti project. Okay, as I move downwards, I'm gonna lighten my pressure up more and more to where it's just really light again. If you are noticing while you're coloring, it could be kind of shiny, okay? What that is, is it's a waxy, film or kind of a waxy barrier because there's wax within the color pencil itself. So when you use a lot of pressure, that wax really lays down on the paper and it kind of creates a barrier. So if you start with coloring like really hard, then you're going to have a very hard time blending your colors out. So that's why you need to keep it light to start with. Okay. All right. There we go. I'm gonna switch over to my second color and I'm gonna do the same exact thing, but I'm gonna work from bottom up, okay? So I'm gonna start out light. And then I wanna work this color up about two thirds of the way. Trying to keep it like fairly blended. Wanted, I don't want it to look too messy. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the bottom and use a harder pressure and bump up, bold out that orange that I've got. Oh, I've been coloring a lot today, my arm hurts. Ugh. Okay. Then I use less pressure as I move up so I have a nice blend. Okay, there we go. That's it. Now, for this side, you can pick ra a random color. You can pick whatever color you want. I'm gonna use that complementary color relationship. So the choices that I have is I could use purple or I could use blue. I don't think I've got like a blue violet in here. So let's see, what have I not used on there today? Oh. Got a navy blue, that's dark. I shouldn't be taking so long in deciding. I'm just gonna use purple, why not? Oh, use black. No, don't use black. Black for shading. Okay, so I'm gonna use purple and then that's just gonna go in my 3D areas. And I'm just gonna use those solid. So 
So this part isn't gonna take me very long, shouldn't anyway. Okay, and then right in there. Okay, and that's basically it. Now, let me show you a trick. You don't have to do this if you don't want. But I want to show you a trick on how you can like deepen those shadows even more by using color. You can go in and actually just use darker colors on top of the black or whatever you've got going on. So in the purple, purple is already a fairly it's supposed to be dark color. So what I would use in that area, because I don't have a darker purple, I can get this navy blue and I can put that on top of the black. And then that's gonna kind of push that dark even more. And then you're kind of doing it with color. So down in here also. Okay. Down in the orange parts, I can probably grab my red orange, like right in here, and I can use that to enhance out my shadows. So I'd only really have it right there. And then on for my yellow, I just use straight yellow, and so I'm gonna try golden yellow if that's not dark enough, now not looking dark enough, then I'm just gonna go ahead and use orange. I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna keep my red orange and use it kind of lightly. So I can use red orange in there to kind of enhance out those shadows. Okay. All right. Who's got questions about that? Nobody? Okay. So what your goal for this project is going to be is you need to finish your name out with interesting font and it needs to be three dimensional. Then you start working on your images. Now you can put a background. Let me show you fourth hours. So this is what I did in fourth hour today. I even put like a background behind mine. You can do that if you want, but you're still expected to put three images. You're still expected to put three images in there. You're okay. Um, and then guys, you can even do form in those two. So this is me, I was kind of showing how you can do that with your color pencil. Just think of your color pencils as a regular pencil, it's just with color, okay? So you can do that. Um, I made all of that in the background on your actual images. You can see these are all my examples today. So there's that one. There's that one. I just did that one with you guys. And then this one. So that's the only time I did that letter A. <coughs> your imagery on your actual project can be behind your letters. It can be in between your letters, but it also can be in front of your letters too. So if you did a really great job at making your letters like super big and it's taken up most of the paper, you're gonna have to draw your images in front of some of your letters. That's no big deal, okay? So block your letters, 3D, imagery, permanent marker everything, erase, color and then we're done okay so I don't think anybody is ready for color nobody I know is ready for color pencil yet today and as soon as you finished everything in pencil you need me to take a look